I stayed at an Airbnb about three years ago. There was no occasion, it was more of just a weekend getaway to spend some time off from work. The Airbnb was a cabin four hours away from my hometown. The cabin looked like it was mostly isolated, only having three or four other cabins within a mile of it, and the woods were right in the backyard. This was just what I was looking for, and I was super excited. When I arrived early in the morning, I explored the property and messed around with some of the cool features. In the afternoon, I sat outside on the back patio in one of those swinging chairs, and as I was looking out into the distance, I saw a man walking in the woods. He looked like a regular guy from what I could see, and I figured he was probably staying in one of those other cabins. He walked deeper into the woods until I couldn't see him anymore, and I continued enjoying the nature. I want to say I stayed out there for almost an hour before going inside and making dinner, then sitting down to watch a movie at the end of the night. During this movie, the doorbell rang. I didn't even know the cabin had a doorbell, but regardless, I went up and answered the front door. A man was standing on the porch, and I recognized him as the guy I'd seen earlier in the woods. How can I help you? The man smiled wide and said he'd been lost for a few hours and needed help getting back to his cabin. I paused for a second, knowing there was something strange about this guy, but I couldn't quite figure out what it was. Yeah, let me get my phone and you can search the address. I closed the door and went over to the couch, picking up my phone and going back, but when I opened the door, he was gone. He wasn't anywhere on my porch or in the front yard. I stood in the doorway for a second, then closed it and went back to the couch. I knew something was off about that guy, but this just didn't really make any sense. I stayed cautious for a while, but eventually I went to bed. I slept surprisingly well, and in the morning, I got up and went outside on the back porch to drink my coffee. But just 10 minutes later, I saw something I didn't expect to see. That man from yesterday was walking in the woods in the same place he was before, seemingly walking on the same path. One thing I knew for sure now was that he definitely wasn't lost. But then why did he come up to my cabin? I went back inside after seeing that and called one of my friends to tell them about this weird situation. It made me feel better to talk it over and have someone else be confused with me. But as we talked, I heard something that almost gave me a heart attack. The doorbell. I quickly whispered to my friend what was happening, and I left the phone call going while I answered the door. Do you need something? I asked. The man smiled and repeated the same thing he said yesterday about being lost and needing help. I looked at him with an annoyed and confused face. Then he spoke again. Can you get your phone and search for the address? My whole body went cold when he said that. I slammed the door shut and updated my friend, who told me I needed to get out of there right away. I agreed, hurrying to pack all of my bags. I checked the peephole to make sure the guy had left before I went out to my car. After shoving my bags in the back seat, I got in and started backing out. As I did, the man appeared in the front window, standing inside the house, and watched me drive away. When I got home, I contacted the Airbnb owner and let them know about this crazy guy who broke into his rental. His response was very short, and he didn't even seem worried about it at all. He just apologized for me disliking my stay. I don't know what he was trying to do, but it had my head spinning the whole time. Even now, I still don't know what his plan was, but seeing him standing in the window inside the house just 30 seconds after I left was the most horrifying and creepy thing I'd ever seen. I'm 29, and I live along the Appalachian Range in Lower West Virginia. I've been going backpacking and camping for years, exploring different trails all around the nearby mountains. My best friend, who lives just a few miles from me, 
would often join me on these hikes. We usually planned one big trail every year in the fall, being anywhere from a few days to a whole week of backpacking and camping. In 2019, we planned to take a trail across the range to a small lake at the top of the mountains. In the days leading up to the trip though, my friend had to call it off because of an emergency at his work. I'd already taken the whole week off of work and had everything ready to go, so I decided to just go alone. On Monday morning, I drove to a nearby trailhead, then started my route. This wasn't a regular recreational trail like you'd typically see on a four-hour hike. These backpacking trails didn't have defined paths, so you have to use maps, compasses, and landmarks to navigate where you're going. Typically, there's a large landmark in the distance, like a specific rock formation that you hike toward, and when you get there, you can see your next landmark, and so on. I spent the first two days hiking toward a ridge in the mountains. When it got dark on the second day, I set up camp several hours from reaching the ridge. I pitched the tent and got a fire going, then heated up some of the food I brought in my bag. The sun had already set, and it was around 8 o'clock when I laid in my tent to rest and read. I left the fire going, planning to put it out before actually sleeping. 20 minutes into reading, and through the fire crackling outside, I heard the strong sound of a stick snapping right behind my tent. I jolted up. My first thought was a black bear, possibly having smelled the food I cooked earlier. I didn't hear anything else though. I crawled out of the tent and shined a flashlight into the tree line behind my tent. Nothing. I called out aggressively to scare away any predators, but again, there were no sounds of anything running away. It was really strange because the stick snapping was very distinct, definitely being from something stepping on it. I stayed outside the tent for a while, looking around constantly before putting out the fire and going inside. I found it really hard to sleep that night because I was so focused on listening for more sounds. In the morning, I was almost surprised to have even slept through the night. I packed my tent and everything else at the campsite, then continued along until I reached the ridge. From there, it was a straight shot to the lake. I was moving fast, trying to get there before dark so I wouldn't have to move my campsite again the next day. I arrived with about an hour to spare before sunset. The lake was beautiful, very much worth the hike. I walked around it, enjoying the scenery, then pitched the tent and set up my camp on the tree line beside the lake. As I sat by the fire, I kept turning around, hearing soft noises somewhere between the trees behind me. I figured I was just being paranoid, but it was really creepy. It almost sounded exactly like footsteps, but I knew nobody would be out here. I would have seen their tent when I walked around the lake. It was too dark at this point to see anything further than a few feet, so looking around wasn't an option anymore. An hour later, I got in my tent and laid down. Every few minutes, I would hear footsteps again. They were barely too quiet for me to tell for sure what they were though. Eventually, I got so tired that I fell asleep. And what I think was only an hour after I fell asleep, I woke up to the sound of someone running away from my tent. I jolted up and grabbed my flashlight, rushing out of the tent and looking in the direction of the footsteps. I saw the bare back of them running away in the distance. My heart was beating rapidly. I looked down and saw footprints all around my tent like they had been walking around me and searching the campsite. I tried to get the campfire going again as fast as I could so I could see better. I was terrified. I had nowhere to go and nobody to help me. I sat at the fire all night, keeping my head on a swivel, but I never saw or heard anything else. 
In the morning, I snapped a few pictures of the lake, then started the hike back. I had planned to stay for a whole day. I wasn't comfortable anymore, feeling like I was being followed. I was able to make it back without any more trouble, thankfully. But along my journey, I began noticing several things missing from my backpack. Small things like food, a few tools, etc. But I always had my bag with me. Even today, I wonder if whoever had been outside my tent that one night had actually snuck inside and stole from my bag while I was asleep. Even the thought of it makes my whole body shiver. My roommate was out of the house for the week, so I had the place to myself. It was spring break, so my college classes were out too. I had no plans, and really nothing I needed to do. On Monday, I was basically trapped inside due to a huge storm blowing through our city. This was common around this time of year, but it still always seems worse every time it happens. The trees looked like they were going to blow away, and the house would shake and creak non-stop. Knowing I wouldn't be able to sleep, I decided to just stay up. I turned on the Xbox and started up one of my video games. I played for well over an hour, probably until 11 o'clock, when the doorbell rang. I paused the game and got up, but then I remembered the whole storm and everything. Who would be outside right now? I went over to the front door and looked through the peephole. Nothing. I opened the door. The wind and water hit me right away, but when I looked around, I didn't see anyone. I closed the door and thought maybe the wind had somehow rang the doorbell. I don't know, it sounds dumb now, but what was I supposed to think? I went back to my game, but only a couple minutes later, I heard a huge crash in the backyard. Stuff tumbling over and breaking. I immediately knew it was our patio furniture and ran over to the back door. Everything was scattered around the yard, blowing around in the wind. I quickly put on my shoes and went outside. I started pushing each piece of the furniture up against the back of the house. The wind was so heavy, it would even hurt sometimes when the water would hit my face. I was rushing, going as fast as I could, until I saw someone. They were standing at the edge of the backyard, watching me. I looked back at them for a moment, but then grabbed the last piece of furniture and ran inside to escape the rain. I looked out the back door as I dried off, but the person was gone. Between that and the doorbell ringing, I was a little bit nervous. I sat in the living room, this time just scrolling on my phone because I was tired of being interrupted. After a while, I struggled to keep my eyes open. I got a blanket and laid down on the couch. I didn't feel like going upstairs and the storm was much louder up there anyway. It took a while but eventually, I drifted into sleep. A few hours later, still well into the night, I woke up from a sudden burst of heavy wind outside, shaking the house. I pulled the blanket to the side and sat up, moving my feet to the floor as I prepared to go check if the furniture outside was still there. But just when my feet touched the floor, they were soaked. It woke me up immediately. I looked down and saw a puddle on the ground right next to the couch. Then I saw another and another leading in a line across the floor. Inside the puddles were faint, muddy shoe prints. I stood up and ran to the corner of the room, heart beating rapidly in my chest. 
After a minute of hearing nothing but the wind outside, I slowly followed the shoe prints. They led all throughout the house, upstairs and downstairs, but I could clearly tell that they entered through the back door, which I had stupidly forgotten to lock in the rush of getting out of the rain. I locked it and pulled my phone out to call 911, but then the thought crept into my mind, what if they're still inside? I stayed quiet and moved into the corner of the house where I felt the most hidden, then called. I waited in silence for them to arrive. When they did, they took a look around, seeing everything I saw, but nothing more. They told me it seemed like a personal attack though, because nothing was missing and they were clearly focused on my house in particular. However, they walked right up to me while I was sleeping and seemingly did nothing but watch me, which is super creepy, but doesn't make much sense. If they wanted to do something to me, they would have at that moment. After some thought, this had led me to believe that whoever it was had actually come for my roommate. They saw me, then looked around the whole house, and then left, doing absolutely nothing. So if this was a personal attack, and my roommate was there, I think things may have gone a lot worse than they had. I was house sitting for one of my best friends last year. They had a few lizards and some fish that I had to feed, along with a bunch of houseplants to water. They were on a two week long business trip, so I agreed to take care of everything while they were away. Their house was a lot nicer than my apartment too, so I was glad to do it. The first week went by and it was great. It felt kind of like being in an Airbnb, but then one night, while sitting at the table in the kitchen, I heard a man cough right outside the house. <coughs> it scared me because it was so close, being just outside the back door. I quickly walked over and turned on the outdoor lights to show that I was home. I waited a minute before looking out the window. Whoever was there was gone now but why were they there in the first place? I stayed extra cautious for a while, but there was nothing else. It was a little past seven and I had nothing to eat, so I went outside to go pick up some food, but as I was walking out, I noticed some footprints in the yard. The grass was pressed down and there was a clear path they walked in. I followed them going from the sidewalk to the back of the house and then turning around and going back to the sidewalk. I got in my car and went out for food, but thought about it while driving. I couldn't come up with any reason someone would do that. It really just seemed pointless. When I got back to the house, I did a quick search for any more footprints in the grass, but didn't see anything. I went back inside and sat down to watch TV. After an hour, I was starting to get sleepy, so I shut it off and got in bed, sitting up on my phone for a bit. That's when I heard someone outside again. They were walking through the front yard. I listened as they went up to the front door and then went around to the back door. I got up more alert now as I heard the back door shifting around like they were trying to open it. I went to the top of the stairs and flipped the light switch, turning on the downstairs lights. The person stopped. I walked down a few steps, then leaned over the railing and looked at the back door. Nobody was there anymore, and for some reason, that terrified me even more. Seconds later, I saw shards of glass flying across the living room as I heard a window shatter. 
From where I was standing, I couldn't see it, but I immediately ran upstairs and into the bedroom. I heard a few coughs, <coughs> then the glass crunching as they stepped inside. As soon as they were in, everything turned to chaos. It was like they were pushing everything over, hitting and breaking things. I called the police, but I feared they wouldn't make it in time to help me. After a minute of destroying the bottom floor, the intruder ran up the steps and went into one of the spare bedrooms, doing the same thing. Then he came up to the bedroom that I was in. He tried opening the door, but I had locked it. Instead of leaving, he started smashing something against it, trying to break it down. One of the panels from the door nearly flew off, allowing them to reach in and open it. The man stepped in. He was wearing a face mask and a hoodie, and was holding a metal baseball bat. I was in the corner of the room, holding back tears as he looked at me in rage. But then he looked away and started smashing the walls and furniture all around the room. He didn't even acknowledge me, he just went around me, destroying the entire room in as little time as possible. Then he ran past me and went into the next room before he finally went downstairs and left the house. I stood in that same spot, frozen, until the police came. My friend came back early the next day to deal with the situation, but basically everything in the house was trashed and destroyed, but nothing was stolen. The police said it almost certainly had to be someone she knew that had something against her, but she couldn't think of anyone who would do this to her. I tried to give a description of the man, but he was fully covered, so I wasn't of much help. The most terrifying part was that the man just ignored me, confidently unthreatened by me. To this day, whoever that was hasn't been back to my friend's house, and their motive still remains unknown. This happened to me last year. I worked at a gas station, which I know is very typical for these sorts of things, but when you actually work there, you never really expect anything to happen to you. This night, it was raining outside. Not too heavily, but enough to make it uncomfortable to be outside without any sort of covering. In weather like this, there's a lot less people coming into the convenience store to grab snacks or pay for gas with cash so my job is to just be there. I'd occasionally walk around the store to stretch my legs and stay awake, but I'd spend most of my time on my phone. As I was looking through my social media feeds, I suddenly heard a strange noise coming from outside. It sounded like someone was tapping on the glass door. I looked up from my phone and saw a figure standing outside in the rain. It was a man his face hidden by the hood of his jacket. I waved, showing he could just walk in and that the door wasn't locked. He didn't move though, he just kept tapping on the door as if he didn't see me. I walked over and pulled the door open, greeting him. He didn't look at me, but walked right past me and over to the counter. It was almost comical in my head how oblivious this guy was. I went back around the counter and the man asked for a pack of cigarettes, then paid with cash. He walked out and that's when I looked out the window and noticed there were no cars in the parking section or by the gas pumps. The man walked off until he reached the road, then continued walking along the shoulder, through the rain like it was nothing. I would have been a lot less confused if he had bought a gas container or something, 
assuming his car ran out down the road, or even broke down, but he just got a pack of smokes and left. With nothing better to do, that's all I thought about over the next hour. It was just such an odd thing. I came to no further sensible conclusions though, and ended up stocking some items to continue passing the time. While doing so, I heard someone tapping on the door again. I walked around the aisle and saw that same man standing outside. I walked over and opened the door. Are you alright? I asked. He didn't respond. You can borrow the phone if you need. I said, trying to offer any assistance. Down the road, he said. I peeked my head out and tried looking, but saw nothing in the distance. But then my gaze fell on a gas container sitting by one of the pumps. He pointed at it and said help, which was when I realized he probably didn't speak much English. I said sure and walked out to the pump with him. He handed me a credit card and I started pumping the gas into the container. The man was standing behind me like he was trying to stay out of my view, which made me uncomfortable. Once the container was full, I quickly handed it over and started walking back, but the guy stopped me, grabbing my arm. He started speaking quickly, but I couldn't understand him. I pulled away and started walking back to the doors, but then he yelled something like he was talking to someone else. And just as I reached the door, I saw a man on the other side of the counter, shoving everything into his backpack. He looked up at me and instantly jumped over the counter, but then everything went black. I woke up laying on the floor with a massive headache. It seemed to only be a couple minutes after the incident, and I almost immediately realized that the guy behind me had hit me over the head in an effort to help his buddy escape. I got the cops over and they took me to the hospital, but I had no serious injuries aside from a concussion and needing a few stitches. The worst part of it all is the embarrassment I felt afterwards, like I'd been played so easily and let them get away with it. Honestly though, I'm thankful that I got hit over the head and blacked out before anything else happened, because the CCTV footage showed the guy inside holding a gun. If I had tried to stop him, or even shown I was a threat in any way, I could have been put down and never woken up. I'm a 31 year old female and this happened when I was 29 back in 2020. My friend, let's call her Stacy, told me that she had a friend who I'll call Brienne that needed a dog sitter because Brienne and her husband were going on a vacation to California. Stacy knew I dog sat on an app called Rover, which is an app where you house sit random strangers dogs, walk them, you name it. I thought it was the perfect opportunity since I was in need of some cash. $200 to dog sit for 5 days. Why not, right? Brienne showed me around her house a week before I dog sat, while also letting me meet her huge husky named Bear. I'm not going to lie, it was a big husky, a little overweight too, but still adorable. Brienne told me that I was welcome to help myself to whatever food I wanted. The front door also included a lock where you punch in a number code to get in, so it was pretty secure. So a week rolls around and I showed up later on a Friday night, not too long after Brienne and her husband left the house to go to California. Things were pretty chill for the first two days. I was at work for most of the afternoon, went to feed the dog on my break came back later at night and would take Bear for rides in my car. I stayed up late watching movies and let Bear sleep by me when it was time to go to bed. Anyway, after work on a Monday night, I hear a knock at the door. 
I looked through the peephole, and it was a guy that looked like he was wearing a black police uniform. I thought it was a bit odd, but opened the door to see what was up. Hello, I'm looking for a George, he said. George? I thought. Oh, no, there's no George here. I'm dog-sitting for a friend. I've been here since Friday. Looking back, it was pretty stupid to tell a random person at the door I didn't know that I was alone. Oh, okay. How long are you here? He said. Till Wednesday. I responded. Oh, that's cool. Okay, sorry to bother you. And then he left. I was slightly weirded out and locked the door. I texted Brienne about what just happened. She pretty much just said, oh, don't worry about it, and shrugged it off. I thought that was weird too. Things were normal again up until I went to bed Wednesday at midnight. As I was laying in bed, the thought kept coming to my mind that I should make sure the front door was locked. So I got up and checked it. Luckily it was, but I still had a weird vibe. I fell asleep, then woke up at 3.05 a.m. to the dog barking like crazy. It freaked me out a little. I thought someone had broken in. I got up and went to the living room, where I saw Bear was growling and barking at the front door. I looked through the peephole and saw the same guy, with another guy this time, standing there in security guard uniforms. At this point, I was creeped out. Why would the same guy come back when he knew I was alone? I didn't bother opening the door this time. Two guys I didn't know dressed like security guards at 3 a.m. I made sure all the doors were locked. When I saw that they had walked off, I opened the door and didn't see any type of security car anywhere. I still have to think bare. I think his barking could have been what scared them off. I went back inside, then went to bed and fell asleep. I didn't bother telling Brienne because she was in Cali anyway. I'm glad to say I only stayed one more night after that. To this day, I still don't know who those guys were or what they wanted, and I haven't been back to dog sit since that incident. Last year, I went on a long 10-day road trip. It wasn't to any single place, I just drove in a big loop, stopping at 5 or 6 different cities. I actually didn't book any hotels in advance because I wasn't sure exactly how long I would spend in each city, or where I would want to take breaks during the drive, so I was relying on hotels allowing walk-ins. The first five nights, I was able to find decent hotels on the course of my drives, but the sixth night, I ran into some issues. I was driving between cities and felt my eyes getting heavy around 11 p.m. I wanted to keep going and get to the next major city and then sleep in a parking lot or something, but there was no way I could make it when I was so sleepy already. I pulled over and contacted a few big name hotels that were on the way but none of them were accepting walk-ins at the time. I was getting nervous, thinking I might have to park on the side of the road and sleep, which was obviously dangerous, but then I saw a sign for a hotel 10 miles ahead. I drove until I reached the building, then parked by the front. The hotel was small, looking more like a motel, being a single story with a bunch of rooms, there were a few other cars in the parking lot, but it was mostly empty. I got out and went up to the reception desk, asking the woman there if I could have a room. Luckily they had one available, and she gave me a key card. I got my bag from the car and brought it to the room. It was really outdated, but for the price it wasn't all that bad. But only a minute after I went inside, there was a knock at the door. I walked over and opened it a crack, just to see who it was. There was a man, mumbling something to himself, 
and right when he saw the door open, he pushed into it, trying to force himself into the room while still talking to himself. I put my arm out and stopped him, preventing the man from fully entering. He stopped talking and looked up at me as I told him to leave. After a second, he turned around and walked away. I made sure he actually left, then locked the door. It was really weird, but I didn't feel too threatened because I was sure it was just some crackhead who was lost. I stayed up another 15 minutes, then fell asleep. A couple hours into the night, I woke up to a knock on the door. I was immediately irritated, knowing it had to be that man from earlier. Having learned my lesson, I put the chain bolt on the door before cracking it open. It was a good thing I did, because the second I unlocked the door, the man rammed into it. He started yelling random sentences that made no sense. I backed up right away and called 911. The man didn't let up though. He continued slamming into the door, trying to break in. A minute into the chaos, the man shoved a knife between the door and tried cutting the chain. There was no way it could cut it, but it definitely horrified me to know that he had a knife with him. The yelling, banging, and cutting went on for several minutes before it went quiet. Police showed up a while later, but the man was gone. I don't know what was wrong with him, or why he wanted to get inside my room so bad, but he definitely had some bad intentions. It may have just been because he was drugged up but breaking into someone's room with a knife is horrifying. All it takes is one wrong move, like answering a door or leaving it unlocked, for someone like him to take advantage. I don't think he had something against me personally, but I still have this feeling sometimes, like I'm being watched. I moved across the state to a newly built house. My previous landlord decided he wanted to sell his house, so when our lease agreement was up, he kicked me out. I decided to also lease this new house, but I was honestly really excited for this place. As soon as I moved in though, I noticed my neighbor across the street staring at me several times within the first couple days. He was a middle-aged man but didn't seem to ever be away from his house. I tried to brush it off, assuming that maybe he was just curious about the new person in the neighborhood, but the more I saw him, the more I realized there was something off about him. He never spoke to anyone, he never smiled, and he never left. He just stayed in his house, watching. I would catch glimpses of him through my window, and see him standing in his driveway at odd hours of the night. It was starting to freak me out. One night, as I was settling in for bed, I heard a noise outside. It was a scraping sound, like someone dragging a heavy object across the ground. I peeked out the window, and there was my neighbor, dragging what looked like a large ladder across his lawn. It was really late. I had no idea why he would be needing to do any work on his house at this time. I tried to tell myself that I was just being paranoid because I was in a new place surrounded by new people, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right about my neighbor. I tried to calm myself and eventually fell asleep. The next morning, I saw him outside again. This time, he was standing at the end of my driveway staring at me through my window. I pulled the curtain shut and I tried to ignore him, but the feeling of him watching me gave me chills. I didn't like that he was by my driveway either, so I quickly got into my car and pulled out of the garage. He was back in his yard by then, but he watched me as I drove away. Things grew a lot worse from here. One night as I laid in bed, I could clearly hear someone walking in the grass in my backyard, which was fenced in. I got up and looked out the window, but the footsteps stopped. 
I waited in my bed for probably 30 minutes, but I didn't hear any more footsteps. I got up and checked the window one more time to be safe, and far back in the yard was a figure. It was hard to make them out because it was so dark, but there was definitely someone standing there, watching me. I backed away and called the police, but the man had left before they arrived. I told them all about my creepy neighbor, but they told me there was no evidence of any wrongdoing and that my neighbor had never been in trouble with the law. I was basically on my own unless something more serious actually happened. I started to take precautions, locking my doors and windows and avoiding being outside as much as possible. Even then, I didn't feel much safer. I'd been at the new house for almost two weeks at this point, and even thought about breaking my lease agreement. Then something happened. I got home from work late and pretty much went straight to bed, but in the middle of the night, I woke up to the sound of something thud against the side of the house. It sounded like it was right up against the wall outside my bedroom though, which was on the second story floor of my house. I slowly got out of bed, heart racing in my chest, and pulled the curtains back from my window. I jumped back and screamed, seeing my neighbor's face staring at me from just inches away from my window. He was standing on a ladder, trying to look into my bedroom. He quickly climbed down and ran away. I called the police again and just a few minutes later, they caught him trying to get the ladder down. While he didn't admit to what he was doing, it was very obvious. In the following days, one of my neighbors came by and explained that they had some weird encounters with that neighbor guy as well. They said they saw him looking through their windows as they were coming home from work one day. Part of me wonders if they could have prevented this whole thing from happening to me if they had just reported the guy, but either way, it's over now. I lived with my older brother for about four years after I finished school. We shared rent on an apartment together since neither of us could afford anything on our own. But during the fourth year, my brother started making better money and he planned to move out once the lease came to an end. I wasn't making a lot, so I knew I couldn't afford to pay for the apartment alone. I looked around online for a roommate for a few months, but decided to just move out as well and find a cheaper place. I searched up until the last month of our lease at the apartment. My brother had basically moved everything out already and there was a lot of pressure on me to find somewhere quick, but with my extremely low budget, it wasn't easy. Eventually though, I stumbled across a listing posted by a homeowner renting out a room in their house. The man's name was Evan. I sent him a text to let him know I was interested, then kept searching. A few minutes later, he responded. We scheduled a time to call later in the day, and when we did, he explained all the details. He said he lived alone in the house and was renting out his spare bedroom, but I'd be able to use all the other rooms in the house too. It sounded great to me, so I agreed to it, and a couple weeks later, I tossed everything in a U-Haul and drove down to the house. Between this time, we'd been texting and calling, and he sent me a bunch of pictures of the house, but I hadn't had the chance to view it in person yet. I got there around noon, parking in the driveway. The house was definitely small, but it looked nice from the outside. Evan was standing in the garage, waving me over. He gave me a quick tour, then helped me unload all of my stuff into my room. Evan seemed like a regular man in his mid-thirties, which was almost ten years older than me, but I didn't really mind. He didn't hold conversations very well though, and was somewhat shy. Anyway, we finished moving everything inside and I dropped the U-Haul off. I Ubered back to the house and by then it was almost 8pm and I was really tired. Evan was on the couch watching TV 
So I told him I was going to bed early, and I went to my room. All in all, it seemed like a decent place, and I was happy with it. I unpacked some more, then set up my bed. And by 9 o'clock, I was finally ready to sleep. I walked over to my door to lock it and turn off the lights, but as I reached my hand out, I saw the knob on the door was empty, as in, there was no lock on it. Confused, I opened the door. The lock was on the outside of the door. I stepped into the living room and asked Evan why the bedroom door locked from the outside. He looked confused and said he never noticed that, but he would switch it around tomorrow. I shrugged and said okay, then went back to my room. I was tired and not too worried about it, but it was definitely an odd find. I got in bed and fell asleep. In the middle of the night, I woke up. I heard someone moving around in the kitchen, which I assumed was just Evan getting water or something, so I closed my eyes again. A minute later, I heard him walking back down the hallway, but as he was passing my room, he stopped. I opened my eyes and looked at the door. He was standing out there quietly for maybe 15 seconds before I heard a click. He locked my door. My stomach dropped and I felt my face go cold as Evan walked down to his room. As soon as I heard his bedroom door shut, I got up quietly and went over to the door. I tried the handle and it wouldn't budge. I stood in shock for a few seconds, coming to reality that this man I'd just met has now locked me in a room. My fear started to turn into anger. I called out for Evan, telling him to open the door. It only took a second before I heard Evan run out of his room and over to my door. I heard him place his hand on the door, but he paused for a few seconds before he unlocked it. I swung the door open right away. What the fuck was that? I confronted him. Evan was stumbling words out, saying he just wanted to make sure he was safe because he didn't know me. I understood that concern, but locking someone in a room was not a smart way to go about it. I told him that I was going to pack up and leave in the morning, and I stayed up all night on the couch in the living room, waiting for the U-Haul store to open. At 9 o'clock, I looked into the hallway, seeing Evan's bedroom door was still closed, hopefully meaning he was still asleep. Then I drove straight there and drove the U-Haul back to the house. When I went inside though, Evan's bedroom door was open. Evan? I called out. I walked over to his room and peeked my head inside. His room was empty. I moved my eyes around the room in disbelief. Seeing as things were only getting weirder, I backed out and got straight to moving my stuff. I powered through two hours of moving boxes and taking apart my bed. I only had two boxes left. I ran inside and picked up another, then rushed to the front door until Evan appeared in the doorway. Move, I said. He stared at me, emotionless. After a few seconds, he stepped aside. I hurried past him and shoved the box in the U-Haul. The last box was half full of random food I kept from my old pantry at the apartment. I decided to just leave it. Evan was freaking me out, and I wanted to get away from him as soon as possible. I started closing the back of the U-Haul before Evan interrupted. You forgot this. He held out the last box. Oh, yeah, thanks. I grabbed it from him and climbed back in the truck. I felt him watching me as I stacked the box. And when I turned, he had his hand on the door. He started pulling it down, trying to close me in. I was able to stop him before the door was even halfway down. I shoved him on the ground, but he got up and ran. Not in the house, but off into the trees away from the house. I didn't know what to think, but I didn't care. I quickly shut the back door and drove away. 
My brother was nice enough to let me stay with him until I found a new place. I don't know what happened at that house, or what would have happened, but there was definitely something very wrong going on. I'm a receptionist at a local hotel, and most of my shifts are overnight. I'm in charge of the front desk, and my main responsibilities are to check in guests, answer phone calls, and keep an eye on the security cameras. It's usually a pretty quiet job, since our hotel isn't the biggest or busiest. This night, the hotel was mostly empty. There were only a few guests staying with us. I was sitting at the front desk on my phone when I saw a man start walking towards the doors outside. I stood up and greeted him when he came inside. He looked up at me with bloodshot eyes and said, I need a room for the night. He was definitely high on something, but regardless, I checked him in and gave him a key to his room. It was standard to allow walk-in bookings when the hotel was less than 75% full. He started walking toward the elevators, and I sat back down and pulled my phone out. A few hours later, I was sitting at the front desk when I heard a noise coming from the hallway. It was a thump sound, like a door trying to be forced open. I got up and walked around the corner to the end of the hallway. The man I checked in a few hours ago was standing there, trying to open up one of our maintenance doors. Can I help you find something? I asked. He looked over at me with those creepy eyes. I asked again, but he just stared at me. I wasn't really sure what to think. Maybe he was really high and looking for the vending machine or something. I don't know. I didn't want to anger the man though, so I went back to my desk and forgot about it. A good amount of time passed with no activity. No sounds from any of the rooms, nobody entering the building or walking through the halls. It was around 3 in the morning, and I did a small walk around the bottom floor just to keep myself awake and busy. As I got to the hallway by the front desk though, I heard a very sudden, loud banging coming from one of the rooms. I stopped and listened for a moment, then went up the stairs to the second floor where I thought it came from. It was very quiet now, which made me somewhat nervous. I walked down the hall, hearing nothing, but when I reached the end, one of the room's doors was open. I listened again for a second, before lightly knocking. Nobody responded. I cautiously peeked inside, unsure of what to expect. It seemed empty. I wasn't comfortable walking all the way inside though, so I couldn't really look around, but I was sure nobody was inside. I closed the door and looked at the room number. 112. That was the room I'd given to the man. I never saw him exit the building though. I quickly walked back down to the front desk. I looked at all the security cameras we had in the lobby and outside the building, but the man didn't turn up. I jumped. It was the hotel phone. One of the rooms was calling. I picked it up. Hello, how can I help you? There was a woman on the line, telling me about some man knocking on her door in the middle of the night. I apologized and assured her I would take care of it. I hung up and took a deep breath. I was getting really nervous now. I walked around the desk, but then again, the phone started ringing. It was someone else from a different room this time, saying he had the same experience as the other woman, someone knocking at his door in the middle of the night. I called the police right away. I stood by the front doors until they arrived, just in case I needed a quick escape. Luckily they came before anything happened, but they didn't find the man. Instead, they found a broken window in his room, 
where he likely jumped out of. It was on the second story though, so I'm not sure how he managed to get away without some major injuries. Later, while the police were still searching, they got a report that the car he used to pay for the room was stolen. It's unclear what the man intended to do or why he was knocking on people's doors. I'm thankful none of them opened their doors though, because this case could have been much worse if they had. This happened to me a couple years ago, after I just rented and moved into a new house. The first week went by quick with no issues at all. I unpacked, bought some new furniture, and got everything set up the way I wanted. The main reason I moved there was because I got a work from home job, so having a quiet place to work was important. This house was far from others and gave me a peaceful work environment. One morning, after making breakfast and sitting down to work, I got a knock at the front door. I walked over and answered it. It was my landlord. He was smiling and asked me how I was doing. Yeah, I'm doing good, thank you, I said, still unsure why he was here. He tried to make small talk for a minute before saying he was just checking in on me, and then he left. I went back to work, but that was definitely weird. I didn't mind him being friendly, but he could have just texted me instead of randomly dropping by the house. The rest of the day went by, and I'd forgotten about it. After dinner, I went for a walk around my street. My neighbor's houses were well spread out, so I never actually got a chance to see the other houses in the neighborhood. I walked for maybe half an hour, then turned back. As I rounded the corner toward my house, I saw a car parked on the side of the street. It wasn't directly in front of my house, but there weren't any other houses nearby. When I walked up and passed it, I realized it was the same car my landlord had in the driveway when he was showing me the house, but there was nobody in the car. I hurried up the driveway and went inside. I looked out the windows, trying to see if he was in the yard or something, but I didn't see him. I wasn't scared really, but just uncomfortable and weirded out by the situation. I had just walked around the whole neighborhood so I didn't know where else he could even be other than the house. After a while, I stopped looking because I wasn't seeing anything. Another hour or so went by until a knock came from the front door. Looking out the peephole, I saw it was my landlord again. I sighed in annoyance and opened the door. He was smiling again, asking how I was doing. Yeah, I'm still good, thanks. Can you just make sure to let me know when you plan on dropping by next time, though? I said politely, try not to be rude. He apologized and said he just wanted to make sure I was happy with the place. I smiled and said I had to get back to work, then shut the door. Something about that interaction, the way he talked and the way he looked at me, was just really creepy. Obviously, the guy didn't understand social cues, but I don't know, he just rubbed me the wrong way. I went to bed that night, thinking of the best way to tell him I want to be left alone. He was my landlord, and this was technically his house, but there are rules they have to follow when renting it out. I fell asleep, still unsure of what to do, but I was woken up not long after. It was well past midnight when a knock at my door forced me up. I turned on the lights and went downstairs, the whole time thinking that if it was the landlord again, I would be furious. I checked out the peephole, and sure enough, it was him again. I swung open the door. What are you doing here? You can't be here right now. You need to leave. I said strictly barely holding back my anger. That's when I saw he was holding a duffel bag. 
He explained that there was an immediate repair he needed to do on the pipes in the basement. He said he had an alarm hooked up on his phone that went off saying there was a minor gas leak. None of the alarms actually went off in the house though, so this was really suspicious. I told him I'd just call someone in the morning and went to close the door when he suddenly forced his body inside, pretending to not notice I was closing the door. I just stood there now, not knowing what to say or do. He looked at me, fully in my house, and smiled. It'll only take a minute. He put down the duffel bag and asked me to follow him so he could show me the problem with the pipe. He opened the basement door and started walking down and I hesitantly followed down a few steps before I thought of something. Hold on, I'm gonna go get my phone so I can take pictures of it. I'll be right back. I said, hurrying back up the steps. Thankfully he stayed. I rushed to my room and got my phone and keys, then went to the front door. But before I left, I quickly went over to the duffel bag and opened it just to make sure I wasn't wrong. Inside the bag, there were no tools, at least not normal ones. I didn't know what they were, and I didn't have time to figure it out. I heard him coming back up as I rushed out of the house and into my car, driving away. I called the police as I drove to a parking lot nearby. What happened after this still bothers me every day. My landlord was still there when they showed up, however, the duffel bag he came with was not. They never found it. Through everything, all that ended up happening was I was able to move out without having to pay the fee of breaking the lease. Him showing up randomly and being creepy, or even inviting himself in, wasn't enough to do anything. I of course took the deal though, moving out right away. But, in the back of my mind, I know he's out there, probably doing whatever he was going to do to me, to someone else, and there's nothing I can do about it.